everyone. I'm Mel Rosen. I'm an assistant professor at the philosophy department at Trent. And today I'm going to talk to you about um, constructing arguments in philosophy. So what is an argument? Hopefully you have an idea about what an argument is at this stage. Uh, but if you asked someone in the street what an argument was, they might think it involves two people shouting at each other. Um, that can involve the arguments that we talk about in philosophy. Uh, but more specifically, what we want to talk about today is the type of argument in which you are trying to convince somebody of something. So the argument is a process in which uh, you think something is true and you want to convince somebody else that that is true. Or maybe you don't even think it's true. Maybe you just want to do um, a, a task in which you try to see what kind of reasons somebody else might think that that thing is true. So philosophy is all about arguments. Um, most of what you read in the texts you look at when you study the course are going to be um, in relation to trying to convince you of something or to make a certain point. And when you are trying to convince somebody of something, there's usually two parts, two main parts to the argument. The first thing is called the conclusion, and that's the thing that you really want to convince the other person is true. Uh, but sometimes you can convince somebody something is true just by telling them, right? So somebody asks you, is it raining? And you say, yes, it's raining they'll usually believe you. So you don't need to make an argument about uh, whether it's raining. You just need to tell people. But other times, they are less likely to be convinced unless you give them reasons for something being true. And those reasons we're going to call premises. So in an argument, you have premises, the reasons, that lead to the conclusion, which is the thing you want people to think is true. So. We're interested in what an argument is, but more importantly for our purposes here, we want to think about what makes a good argument and what makes a bad argument, and how do you write an argument well in your assignments, or how do you say an argument well when you're talking to somebody. So in your classes, the first thing you want to do is make sure you understand all the different arguments that are around that are relevant to the argument you want to put forward. So you want to begin by reading very carefully uh, the text with care and attention. You want to make sure that you understand the text very well. Um, so first, before you make your own argument, you want to make sure you understand the argument of other people. So sometimes you might find that the argument is something you agree with. Sometimes you might think it's something you disagree with. Uh, but whatever you um, are trying to do with your um, course, you want to make sure that you understand the, the argument in the text well first uh, before moving on to generating your own argument. Maybe you're supporting the argument in the text, or maybe you are arguing against the text. So step one is read carefully and thoughtfully. Understanding is one of the main things that you'll be marked on any time you write something in philosophy, any time you maybe do a presentation, uh, if you um, um, write on a message board. You always want to be understanding, even in class, you want to be understanding, uh, demonstrating your understanding of the, of the material. So the first thing you want to do um, is work out what an author is trying to tell you, hopefully in a little bit of nuance. So you might understand the main thing they're trying to tell you. Uh, but to understand their arguments, you also want to understand what reasons are they giving and in what way do those reasons support, or the premises support, the conclusion. You want to take extra care when you're looking at something that you disagree with. Because it might be really easy for you to um, ignore or skip over someone else's view if it's not the view that you have. So when you're looking at someone's argument that you don't think is correct, sometimes you want to pay extra attention 
uh, to that view. And if you're reading an argument of somebody who you agree with, try to think of things which you might use to disagree with their argument. So even if you agree with something, you want to think about um, what kind of arguments against this might we consider. Don't be too easy on somebody just because they agree with you. Okay. So think about how you might criticize someone's arguments um, and think about what arguments you might give in support of somebody else's argument. And this applies to whether or not you agree with the person you're reading. So when we're generating our own arguments, we use the information given in the text or our own research to come up with arguments for and against um, the uh, different things we might want to be convincing somebody of. Okay. So one way to think of reading is to think of it as entering into a dialogue in which people present arguments in which you might under, uh, argue, argue against or for them. So argue is one of the main things we do in philosophy, and arguing is, uh, involves evaluating and giving evidence for or against certain positions. So when you evaluate an argument, that's when you look at somebody else's argument and pretty much say whether it is good or bad. So we mean uh, good or bad in a, um, uh, an argumentative sense and not in a moral sense, right? An argument is good or bad depending on certain features of that argument, which I'll tell you about soon. Okay. For your own presentation of arguments, you want to make sure that you present anything you write, whether it's an argument or some other kind of information, some background, um, clearly, um, and present it in a, as comprehensible and plausible way as possible. So you want to write clearly, of course, or speak clearly. Um, and you always want to make sure that whatever you're saying, you give the best arguments for that view as possible. In philosophical writing, it doesn't matter too much what your conclusion is. You can have any opinion you like, so long as you support that conclusion with good reasons. Okay, so your main task is not to try to, say, guess what the teacher believes or the professor believes and um, replicate whatever they say, but your task is to provide reasons in support of whatever conclusion you happen to want to support. So use arguments where possible rather than asserting. So remember before I talked about um, if you give somebody uh, a weather report, it's raining. Uh, you probably don't need, that's just an assertion or a proposition. You don't need to prove that it's raining, uh, but when you're writing a philosophical argument, you probably want to give reasons for any kind of assertion or premise, uh, proposition uh, that you don't think the person will already obviously think is true. So I said before an argument has a premise and it has, uh, um, it has several premises and it has one conclusion. A little bit of a more complex argument might also have sub-premises. So you have your conclusion supported by premises, but sometimes somebody might not agree with your premise. So you give evidence in support of that premise, and that's called a sub-premise. So um, you might want to argue that um, somebody should bring their rain jacket to work today. And they say, well, no, I don't want to bring my rain jacket to work. And you say, well, you should bring your rain jacket to work because it's going to rain. And then they say, well, how do you know it's going to rain? And then you say, well, I checked the weather report, and the weather report said it's going to rain. So you're giving different layers of evidence. Why should I bring my rain jacket to work? Because it's going to rain. How do you know it's going to rain? Well, I saw it in the weather report. This is a very boring argument, but hopefully you get the picture. So um, premises can be supported by prem uh, sub-premise. So that's just how the structure of arguments work. But what makes an argument a good argument? Two things. Sounds simple, but when you get into the details, it gets much more complicated. So firstly, 
the evidence you give in an argument needs to be true. Okay. Uh, obviously, you can't make stuff up and have a good argument. Obviously, if something turns out to be false, your argument is going to turn out to be bad. So the evidence needs to be true. Sometimes we don't know whether something is true, so you just have to settle for highly plausible. So um, did I really check the weather report for tomorrow? No, I didn't. So I just lied to you. Sorry. I didn't actually check the weather report. I don't know whether or not it's true, whether the weather report <laughs> says it's going to rain. Um, so you got to be careful of sneaky people like me who just make up stuff. So that's a bad argument. I don't know whether or not you should bring your rain jacket. Um, the second thing that an argument needs to be a good argument is that it has to have a good inference. So the inference is the relationship between the premises and the conclusion. Does the premise or do the premises give good evidence for the conclusion, assuming that they are true? So if it is true that the weather report says it's going to rain tomorrow, is that good evidence that it is going to rain tomorrow? Depends on how good the weather report, how reliable the weather reports are, of course. Um, usually that's the best evidence we can go on for whether it's going to rain tomorrow. So we call um, a argument in which the premises prove 100% of the time that the conclusion is true as a valid argument. So if logically speaking, the premises force the conclusion to be true, it's called valid. And sometimes we just care about giving a strong reason to support the conclusion. The argument I gave before is not valid because the weather report could be wrong, but it gives quite a good strong reason to support the conclusion. Usually we trust the weather report. So if you show that an argument is either valid or strong, and you show that the argument has either true or very plausible premises, that is a good argument. And a bad argument is going to be any argument that fails either or both of those requirements. Here's an example from the philosophy of religion. You may have heard this argument before. OK, so in this argument, somebody is trying to prove that God exists. OK, so why might you think God exists? Well, firstly, if you look around, nature and the cosmos, it appears to be like a machine designed. Okay? And all machines that appear to be designed have a designer. So if you look at a chair, if you look at a car, if you look at a watch, if you look at some clothes, um, all things that appear to be designed have been designed by somebody. So if nature appears to be designed and all things that appear designed have a designer, then nature have must have a designer. And God is the only kind of being that could design a cosmos, therefore God exists. So in this kind of argument, you can see that there's two levels of reasoning. You have, some, you have a conclusion, God exists. You have the main argument um, that nature has a designer and God must be the designer. And then you have evidence supporting the premise that nature has a designer. So it's got two separate parts to the argument. And if you were to evaluate this argument, you would look at whether all the premises are true and whether all the inferences are either strong or valid. Okay. If you were to write this argument yourself, you would probably write it as a paragraph more than, um, you'd be more likely to write it as a paragraph uh, than as this kind of um, um, design which is uh, called standardization. But in some sometimes it can help you to write an argument like this too. When writing an argument, you might want to use indicator words to make it clear which part of the argument is which. So you might say something like, first I assume this or my second premise is that, or here's my conclusion. That's a bit of a clunky way of writing it. You might instead use indicator words like therefore, hence, or so to suggest that something is a conclusion. And you might use other indicator words because, since, and due to the fact that to indicate that something is evidence or a premise. Okay. So 
The first thing you want to do when you write your own argument is to make sure your own argument is either strong or valid. Okay, so this can be very complicated and you can do logic classes and critical thinking classes that talk about how to do this in different ways. Uh, but I'll just give you a few examples for the purposes here. So, one thing you can do is look at, if I assume these premises are true, must the conclusion be true? So, if I say, for example, either I'm going to have um, a burrito for lunch or I'm going to have some sushi for lunch. And let's assume that I'm not lying, like I lied before. <laughs> Actually, unfortunately, I don't have burritos or sushi, so I am lying now. But let's assume that what I'm saying is true. Either I'm going to have a burrito for lunch or some sushi for lunch. Um, and then I say, um, oh, I can't be bothered making a burrito, so I'm not going to have a burrito, therefore I'm going to have some sushi. He might say, well, that's not a great argument, but it is a valid argument. Either I'm going to do this, A, or I'm going to do the other thing, B, and I'm not going to do B, therefore I'm going to do A. Logically speaking, that is valid. If you think the conclusion, uh, that the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Um, so in terms of logic, it's a good argument. And there's a bunch of different types of structures of argument that are uh, valid. Um, that you can talk about in class. So make sure that your argument is either valid or strong. So if it's not valid, make sure at least it gives really strong, good reasons to support the conclusion. And then double check that the argument has true premises. So what if you don't know if something is true? Um, well, you could look it up, of course. Um, somebody says something to you, like, uh, the human brain weighs 18 kilos. That sounds really false. <laughs> that is very false. But if you weren't sure, you could just look it up, right? Um, sometimes it might be something a little bit more tricky. So you might have to ask for evidence that something is true. Okay, so um, think about whether something is true or very plausible. If we look at the argument uh, from before, there are a few problems with it. Okay. It is true, um, is it true that nature does appear to be designed like a machine? It's not clear whether that's true. So some people might think that that seems to be true, but if we compare normal machines that we design versus the cosmos, it's unclear whether the uh, cosmos actually has been designed or ha does look designed. That might be subjective. So it's not necessarily true that all machines um, appear um, that the nature appears to be designed. And further, even if nature does appear to be designed, it doesn't necessarily prove that nature has been designed. Maybe something could appear to be designed and not actually be designed. So one example to, to that might be the human brain. You might say that the human brain um, developed due to natural selection or evolution or something like that. It appears very complex and maybe it appears to be designed, but perhaps it hasn't been designed. Okay. So um, always make sure to carefully explain any reasons you give in favor of your view. So explain what you mean when you, um, when you give, a, a, um, give some evidence. Um, one tip I always suggest is try to avoid jargon or um, trying to sound as academic as possible. If you see a short word and then you think, hmm, maybe I should replace that short word with a more intellectual sounding longer word, just don't do that because sometimes it just makes the sentence unclear or maybe that word isn't quite what you meant. So try to write as clearly and concisely and directly as possible. Don't try to make it sound as um, fancy as possible. Don't try to imagine, well, how did uh, Kant write? When you read Kant, it's really hard to read. So that's, no, that's bad. Don't write like Kant. Um, write like a clear, uh, a clear writer, Kant was not as a good a writer as he was a philosopher. Okay, so um, explain clearly the relevant topic of your argument. Use examples where relevant. 
but be sure to explain them. And make sure throughout any writing that you explain the relevance of what you're saying to what you are trying to argue. Okay. Some other ways to develop an argument is to consider counterexamples. So maybe you're reading a text and somebody is giving an argument and um, you can immediately see, hey, they don't take into account this thing. So they are arguing um, that God exists, let's say, and they are arguing that animals must be designed, but they're not taking into account, let's say, evolution. So you could use evolution, for example, as a counterexample. A counterexample is something that provides evidence against the argument that um, somebody is proposing. Okay. So if uh, that argument is true, let's say, then evolution should not have happened. If God designed humans, let's say, evolution shouldn't have happened. But we have a good example of uh, we good argument for evolution. Um, therefore, that's a counterexample. So some things that apply to writing in philosophy that may not apply when writing in other areas of research. So if you are a scientist, some of these things, for example, don't apply. The first one in particular, in philosophy, we like to use I and me whenever you're writing in your own um, opinion or giving your own personal views or arguments. So if you come up with a new argument in support of a view, make sure you make it clear that it's your own argument or your own view. Um, in science, maybe you want to be a little bit more neutral. They don't always like it when you talk about me or I. But in philosophy, we like it because we can distinguish between what you're saying um, and what the author is saying that you are commenting on, or what somebody might say, a hypothetical person. Somebody might argue this. Um, the, uh, the author of the, the article argues this, but I think those are both false, because I argue this other thing. So when relevant, talk about I and me. It's all about you. Um, it helps to be clear in philosophy. Don't necessarily do that in other fields, though. Um, make sure you define any key terms. So before I said avoid using jargon, sometimes there are technical terms in philosophy, of course. Whenever you use a technical term, make sure you explain it. And that shows that you have understanding of that term, that you're using the term right. Um, you always want to throughout be demonstrating your understanding of the topic, and defining terms is just one way of doing it. And in um, argument, uh, when making arguments, you always want to be charitable towards the person you are arguing against. Being charitable means that you are trying your best to interpret their argument um, in as plausible a way as possible. So maybe they have written something a little bit unclearly. If you read some ancient philosophers, sometimes it's really hard to work out what they're trying to say. Um, you can be charitable by interpreting something in as uh, fair and the best way possible. You don't want to um, represent their argument in a way which is um, weaker than the actual argument they gave. So try to be charitable where possible. Of course, you can't put words into someone else's mouth. And um, when you're writing, try to develop a plan um, at the beginning to think about where am I going with my um, argument. So sometimes during the writing process, your p opinions might change. But it's always good to start off with a plan. Writing a good philosophy essay takes time, or a good argument takes time. Um, and make sure, <laughs> where possible, not to start um, too late before the deadline. Here are some things that you might want to avoid when writing an argument or writing in philosophy. Um, I see this a lot in essays, in particular, people wanting to start off the essay with a sentence like, since the dawn of time, philosophers have considered these important issues, or we have pondered for millennia, 
Technically, that's true. We probably have pondered this for millennia, but everybody, everybody knows that. Don't bother saying that. It's general. It doesn't really do anything um, to move the argument forward. So get rid of all stuff like general since the dawn of time. Always avoid, avoid since the dawn of time or a sentence like that. Another general sentence you might want to avoid is philosophers disagree on this topic. That is almost always true. So since it's almost always true, there's not really much point in saying it. You don't need to say things that are obvious. Okay. Um, it takes up time in a short assignment or a short essay. You don't want to waste any time uh, with generalities. Also, when the uh, marker is reading what you're writing, they probably uh, know what you're talking about, but you should always write in a way that doesn't assume that the person who's reading what you're writing knows what you're referring to. So always, even if you know, oh, it's the, just the professor reading this, make sure you write as if the person reading it is going to be an intelligent person who hasn't read the same articles you've read. That's the best way of demonstrating that you know what you're talking about. So think about maybe your friend who's doing another course reading it. How would you best explain this to them, not to necessarily your professor? So you always want to make sure you show that you understand the different things. If you ever quote, um, make sure you put it in um, quotation marks and have a reference, but try to quote only sparingly. So don't use too many quotes. If a uh, text is filled with quotes, then you haven't really uh, done the writing yourself. So only use quotations sparingly. Where possible, uh, write something in your own words. Um, be sure uh, that you clearly read the instructions for any assignment that you are given. Um, and make sure you're um, doing everything that's asked in the assignment. Keep to what they want from you, uh, rather than going off and doing some other task. Um, carefully the, review the syllabi um, and look at any rubrics that might be available. And when in doubt, talk to your instructor and they can give you further information. Thanks for listening.